Hi everybody, it's Father Norm. You know, I'm gonna ask you, and you may wonder, what is he doing this for, and what do I say? My question, hey, who are you gonna vote for this November? Whoa, you know, most people don't ask that question of one another, and I'm not really asking it of you, but I am saying that it's real understandable, especially in the presidential cycle for the last three cycles, that sometimes that whole notion of who are you gonna vote for, uh, uh, can start off with a misunderstanding, can start off with an argument. And so understandably, a lot of people, I don't wanna talk about that, I'm not gonna ask anybody else, and I hope they don't ask me. And I can remember in these last couple cycles too, that talking to families, a couple of families, each, each of them, and saying that they were, you know, the elections in November, I remember they said, we are dreading Thanksgiving. And I said, why? They said, because, We've been on opposite ends, both these cycles, the family, some family on opposite ends of who they voted for and everything. But what it created was a hostility that people couldn't even get along and enjoy each other's company for Thanksgiving. And hopefully that won't happen this year. Hopefully we're learning and growing. One of the things the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops did is they're getting a focus to now on how people can be more civil in their, and more caring in their conversations. We can have different con convictions and they can be strong, but never to go through those convictions with hostility and hate. In fact, uh, Pope Francis had talked about that a few years ago, relying on the wonderful parable of the Good Samaritan. And you may know the background. People know, okay, the, the priest and the rabbi, Levite went by. There was a, a Jewish man on the side of the road. And he was beaten up. They just went by in a hurry. The Samaritan, by the way, the Samaritans were hated by the Jews and vice versa. He's the one who came to the guy and helped out. He considered him a neighbor. Jesus told that parable. It was pretty radical in his day because, again, the hero in this, and he's speaking at least initially to a Jewish community, but it could be any community. The hero is the Samaritan whom the Jews resented. And he's making the point, we gotta get beyond that. We gotta recognize we're all each other's neighbor. We gotta look out for each other. He was saying that in that hostile division then, and, and the American bishops remind us following Jesus even today. Again, not asking anybody to compromise a conviction but how do we talk and share with love? And so uh, the American bishops have, have, have come out with a, a program that actually our own parish and probably a number of Catholic parishes will do it called A Better Kind of Politics, Civilize It. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it now, but since uh, you're not gonna have all the information, all you have to do on everything I'm gonna talk about is just Google you know, American Catholic bishops uh, program on civility, something like that, and you'll get all the information I'm sharing with you. Even if you don't go to a program, we uh, here at uh, St. Vincent are starting that program on uh, September 26th, Thursday night, for six Thursday nights in a row. It'll be a little light supper at 6.15, then a presentation and input from seven o'clock to 8.15. Think about that. But even on your own, I'm gonna to read to you what some of the American bishops following the teachings of Jesus have been saying about something we ought to look at deeply that maybe we haven't always. Here, they encourage a pledge. I'm giving the pledge. It's also in their website if you want it there. I think we can also get it on our website that you can see it as we go through the next few weeks. The pledge is this. I pledge, first of all, charity, to affirm through my words and actions the dignity of every person, each made in God's image. Even those with whom I disagree are made in his image. Secondly, to respectfully listen in order to understand experiences different from my own. Next theme, clarity. One, to engage in critical examination to ensure that my perspectives are rooted in truth, that my sources of information are unbiased, and that I do not open myself to manipulation by partisan interests. Two, to form my conscience through prayerful reflection, study of scripture and church teaching, and guidance from your reputable experts. Three, to reflect on my own values and seek with others to identify shared values. Four, 
to be open to the process of dialogue that can require change of perspective, my own and others, in service to the inviolable dignity of all and the common good. Third theme, creativity. To be a bridge builder who participates in constructive dialogue based in shared values, a mutual exchange of gifts and the humility together to seek the common good. Two, to see differences in perspective as opportunities for creative tension, which can yield solutions for the common good. Three, to work with others in order to identify creative solutions rooted in our shared values. That's it. There's a lot more to it. There's a beautiful prayer for civility, a number of other things to look up and read and pray about, and possibly do this program with a few friends that you can get it from the Conference of Bishops, or like we're having it beginning that, that last Thursday in, uh, in September. And saying all this, it goes along, you've heard me say, a number of years ago, I started a program called the Heart to Heart Communications, and one of our basic themes was this, even though we may not see eye to eye, can we relate heart to heart? That's why, to me, this says it all about, and again, is not compromising convictions on values, but not in any kind of way putting each other down or being hurtful or harmful or even hateful of somebody who sees things differently. God bless you. Hopefully this time we'll bring it all together and nobody will have to have a miserable Thanksgiving.